So um, yeah, so you can think about which topic you want to study and present. Um, and you're gonna prepare, again, roughly 20 to 25 polished, nice lectures on the subject, okay? You can do either board talk or slide talk, either is fine, okay? I will be checking whether you actually wrote through the subject, actually understood it, rather than you know memorizing, you read something, let's just throw out and forget about it, okay? okay. That's, that's the goal. Okay, so let's let's get started on, on the lecture. Let's get that fixed. Can I have a comment? Yes, you can have a comment. <laughs> I think supersymmetry is cannot be explained in 25 minutes. None of that can be explained in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I can pick half of these subjects spend the one semester. <laughs> and some of you experienced, right? I have a couple of this. Mm -hmm. Roughly speaking, this much. Yes. For one semester, totally packed. Like no, just, just joke. <laughs> no, it's not. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so then the question is, you know, whether you can be effectively introducing concepts of a supersymmetry, right? I'm sure a lot of you, most of you, heard of what that is, and then in an economic but comprehensible way, how to construct a supersymmetry field. Okay. So that's. Uh, oh, by the way. Uh, uh, Presenting is one uh, uh, I'm debating, but maybe I'm asking to submit a report. You can get that, then can be checked whether you actually understood something. Okay, I'm not looking for copy and paste from somewhere. Okay, you can do that, but I won't see your language. You have to check this calculation and understand what they mean. That's that kind of thing. Professor Wedge said, should you today or the report? Final exam, wait, we're going to have a presentation. You didn't go to the report. Uh, do they a report really fixed once I decide to ask for a report? I have, but most likely I will. Any other question? Yeah. Yeah. You mean, okay, that is a bloody. So that's obviously like who is going to do it better or not. Uh, so, for instance, um, yeah. uh, in principle, it's possible, for instance, um, if somebody wants to pick a normally, then we can, <coughs> we can think about whether we can split it into two. Or, for example, so or what people selected the so we have this yeah. and that they could just cover divide the topics in time. Yes, that happened in, in the past. That one guy is easy in a sense they started from the study algebra and talk a little bit about it. Next I have to talk about super symmetric gauge theory with you know, gauge. Oh, okay. I'm fine, okay? It's not my I mean I can do it that way if you want. Okay. Okay, so let's uh any other questions? But, and it is kind of dark room or lecture. Uh, what's the difference? So, uh, whenever you open your mouth and talking about some physics, I want it to be in a coherent, comprehensible, nice delivery of the message. So I think he's asking whether there is possibility for questions. Mm -hmm. Questions. Oh. Uh, so how, how? Okay. Well, how 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 are they different? Lecture versus art club? Oh, I think. Uh, with a smile or not? Or not? I think the so, combining all these topics into one slide. Or choosing just oh, a yeah. seminar paper. And... Oh, good. So good. Then I'll, I'm I'm thinking of a more of a lecture style. Okay. I don't want to see like you know. Let me summarize in the last fifty years what people have done for effective field theory. There are these important papers and touched up and blah blah. No, I want to see even if it's a small you know narrow scope. I want to see that you actually understood. You actually want to you know. Go through the steps and then you know explain what this means and therefore this means as well. Okay. Is that clear? Yes. So that's why I don't see. Any other questions? Can audience ask questions? <laughs> yeah, I will be one of the audience. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Good. Exciting. <laughs> And again, I will type type up something with the with the sort of references. Although you don't have to follow the references if you find a better references or you know something that you want to better. Okay, let's come back. Um, today we will finish up a photon, uh, photon, and oh yeah.
And then we will uh, now eventually write down the QED action of QED like Lanja, which we'll talk about the you know, uh, exemplary uh, QED properties. Then we will try to write down a couple of those amplitude, and then we will focus on one of those processes, and then we really try to understand the physics behind it. Okay, so that's the goal, because I cannot cover entire QED processes in detail, because that, that takes a while, right? So last time we started talking about follicle properties. Okay, so to this end, just to remind you, so we started out with this, and then just so that we can set up the question of a propagator, we added a, a source in it, like so. So this is, again, if you want, this is sort of a class of source. And then we even talked about, you know, what are the microscopic physics that can possibly provide the whole source, right? Meaning, we talked about the public, so these sources can produce photons out of it. And then, um, the equations of motion of this thing, they can be set up in such a way that in curious space, we derive that it looks like the photon, uh, photon source, new, this, good, new, okay. Um, good. Right, so then we say, okay, the way I, this time we're gonna approach this, this question of uh, uh, getting a propagator is saying that, okay, I'm gonna get a Green's function of this equation. So <laughs> Green's function equation is going to be P nu, what do I wanna say? P nu rho, this is delta nu rho. Okay, so this is Green's function, classical Green's function. Then once we can um, uh, determine the Green's function uniquely, then you know, photon field configuration can be obtained by contracting like so. So given a source, there's Green's function, you get the photon field. The problem that we encountered the last time was that uh, this, what did I call probably probably D or something, right? Or the D mu nu operator. So this was not uh, invertible. And we saw that because this one had a eigenvector with a zero eigenvalue, as you can quickly check. In other words, this has a zero determinant, whichever way you want to phrase. Okay, so that was not invertible, so we cannot get it. But it was crucial and important to understand, you know, what is the origin of this non-invertibility of this operator. And then the way we sort of understood that is this. So given a unique source, and if there were unique Gris function, because this was invertible, then I should get unique photon fields, right? But we know that uh, this guy has a, 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 this is not uniquely defined, ideally because it's had this gauge redundancy. So it's clear that since this action has a well-defined gauge redundancy, given a unique unique source, I should not expect to get well-defined Green's function because how can I then get a unique photon field because I have a redundancy. So therefore, in order to get a invertible uh, operator, differential operator, it's clear that I have to break this redundancy. So we have to add, so the, there's a resolution to this issue, is that we have to add a term that breaks this redundancy, so that means we have to add a gauge term. Okay, so we're gonna add an extra term. So in addition to what we have here, we're gonna add a, um, did I say plus or minus? Just make sure, so that it's not slightly cool. So we have this extra term. So let me make a couple, a couple of comments. So uh, in this case, gauge fixing condition that effectively imposing 
is this condition, which is called uh, covariant gauge or names. Covariant of Lorentz. Lorentz is different from Lorentz, not the Lorentz gears of that thing. So how do you want to do this term? Let, let me just explain first. Uh, first of all, first of all, you see that if I so so here C, in other words, here either you write this way or the other way around, it's your it's your convention. So either you write that way, or instead I'm just gonna write this way, because you don't feel nice seeing something sitting in the denominator, it's up to you if that's not a crucial part at all. Um, so this thing, if you want, is a auxiliary area. Generary field. This is non propagating. And if you want, this is like random multiplier. So, what does that really mean? So, what that means is that I just added something which is not like adding extra propagating local digital freedom. But so by this, what I mean was the equation for motion of C, the goal of you know existence of this field is such that whose equation of motion should impose the gauge condition, the gauge fixing condition that I want. So in this picture or in this presentation, clearly if you just get the equations of motion of C, which is just that term. That is equal to zero. So that is equal to zero. That's enforcing a uh, gauge fixing condition. Okay, that's exactly what the Lagrange multiplier does, right? Okay, so now let's actually go back and see um, we actually achieve the goal with them that we want. Yes. So in classical, uh, so the Lagrange multiplier and the your equation of motion is exactly. Uh, exactly well behaved in classical mechanics, but this is quantum mechanics. So is it okay? I mean, yeah. maybe some quantum fluctuation will uh, disturb the I mean, correction, make correction to some theory. Okay, yeah. good. So that, that's the important question. So let me answer that question. So the question was, okay, at, at the classical level, meaning by playing with only Lagrangian, it looks like it's all working and nice. And and is it guaranteed to work out even if I consider fully a quantum mechanical theory, okay, quantum, quantum, including quantum fluctuations? The one way you can think about that is, is as follows. Eventually, we're going to talk about um, path integral. Uh, what path integral says is that, or even in this picture, is that given a theory, this is a starting point of talking about quantum field theory. And then once you successfully quantize it, then eventually you should be able to look at all possible quantum fluctuations, right? So there's a classical background, you should be able to turn on at all possible fluctuations. So quantum theory, therefore, include not only a specific quantum, a classical configuration, but it includes all possible quantum fluctuations. So therefore, quantum field theory is basically sum over entire possible field configurations. Okay? Now, when we talk about this gauge redundancy, uh, and then the, the necessity of fixing the gauge is basically saying that, okay, here are all possible photon fluctuations, okay? Entire possible set of uh, uh, photon field configuration has to be mod out due to this equivalence relation. Because if I see one configuration, and then if I do see another configuration, which are related by this equivalence relation, I have to say that they are the same. I should not, you know, add this and that separately, right? That's the this statement, okay? So when we therefore say doing the sum of all possible field configurations with a for gauge, gauge, gauge theory, we can do two different ways. One, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna sum over only the photon configurations, but keep in mind that I have to satisfy certain gauge fixing conditions. So I'm gonna sum over all possible photon field configurations but that only satisfy gauge fixing, because that is the same as saying that I would automatically satisfy this, automatically satisfy this equal to relation. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. Meaning we're going to walk through the A space 
But you have to make sure that you always satisfy a certain gauge fix that you should pick. That's one way of doing it. Second way of doing it is follows. Okay, I'm gonna say, I'm, I'm very dumb. It's very hard to keep track of only the right configuration to do it. Let me just blindly sum over all possible end. But instead, I'm gonna add another field whose entire point is to impose this certain, uh, uh, certain condition. What it means is that, okay, uh, it's very mechanic that to keep track of all these conditions when I sum over A. So instead, let me just blindly sum over the entire possible A, but which one eventually will survive will be carried out by uh, fluctuation of the second field. Meaning by looking at the equation of motion of the second field, it automatically chop out you know, uh, unnecessary or uh, unwanted pieces eventually. So either you just sum over A, you know, taking care of this, or sum over entire A, but you also have to sum over C configurations because that enforces this condition. These are two equivalent ways of doing this. But since this is uh, not propagating, you know, basically, uh, you know, uh, constraint parameter, there's no like quantum correction to this if you want. And why is there a is there is a scale? There is a scale. Is that yeah, scale? A square. Oh, yeah. uh, one way to view that is this is dimension. Okay, we haven't talked about power counting and whatnot yet. But this this has a dimension four, and, and this now is a dimensionless. So if you if you like, if I don't want to give a, a dimension to this, that's one nice way of doing it. Uh, there's a if you want eventually there's a second reason. Uh, second reason. Uh, I, can, I, I let me just say the word because because so eventually when we quantize uh, not the U1 gauge theory but Young Mills gauge theory, quadratic nature of gauge fixing eventually will translate it into uh, quadratic action for. It's known as a pretty papa cost. Okay, I said that I was just gonna say a word, but anyway, there's some some something going on there. Okay, well, there was a quick question. Sure, this has one that will scale by open down round the new A do what the this one is not in the way that so the question is what happened if you do this? Okay, A great exercise. <laughs> go, go ahead and do it. <laughs> uh, B um uh, like I said, uh, at this level, the, the goal of this guy is to, to impose this condition. Uh, I'm not sure what, what difference it will make eventually, although uh, it will be subtle because now uh, in, in, the, in the, so I'm going to write down this, like including this term, and then that may tell you something about the linear possibility. But then, then I, I told, I said that Eventually, we, we, we do the gauge fixing for non abelian gauge theories. Uh, the quadratic nature of this thing is a, 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 you know, directly linked to the fact that there's a necessary cost, good cost. Okay, this is like a very precious cost, known as a petty power cost, um, uh, that, that gets uh, good, good, good actions. Okay. Yes. So you said that this choice is not a unique condition to improve the. That kind of speaking terms of my life. Yeah, so this is a choice of gauge fixing term because that will impose this gauge fixing. But last time we talked about another gauge fixing, which was like, okay, let me first fix like that, which we call the full on gauge. Full on gauge fixing. On top of that, we impose this process. Okay, so this is just a way of doing it. The, the reason why this might be useful, as you can see here, is that this is manifest the Lorentz invariant way of imposing a uh, gauge. So it's it's nice to write to the Lorentz invariant Lagrange. So we have to talk about the Lagrange. So we have to talk about the Lagrange. So we have to talk about the Lagrange. So we have to talk the Lagrange. So we have to talk about 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 the Lagrange. 그 그래디언트를 해서 했을 때 설명이 안 되나 그 그게 벡터가 0이 되면 안될 거예요. Which vector? 아 뭐라고 해야 되죠? 잠시만요. 어 잠시 알아보겠습니다. Good. <웃음> so you, you tell us once once you figure it out. Okay. So reason the operator D is not is singular. 
is related to the A is gauge dependent. Uh, you mean this? Uh, yes. Why? Why that is? What's the reason that D is? Good. So the re so good. So the reason why this is singular. Uh, point number one. I mean, clearly it has a eigenvector with a zero eigenvalue. That's that was a like if you want if you wish zero to level. A way to see why it's singular. But intrinsically, what that means is that uh, if I do have a, a eigenvector that is proportional to PMU, that means that I am allowing a gauge the, the gauge field configuration whose polarization is proportional to the PMU. And we saw that that's exactly if you want the you know, unwanted is your freedom. Okay, so that's if you want the longitudinal polarization. We want to project it out. And that's exactly the culprit that causing this one. Which means that we have not successfully projected our unwanted, unfaithful the freedom yet. And we knew that the way we can achieve that is by actually doing the gauge issues. But that's all uh, totally correct. Um, can, I, can, I can I understand the, well, your explanation? Sure. So I said that, that if patient D when your PMU equals to zero. Yes. Uh, if the A mu is also a, is a solution, then A mu plus P mu is also a solution. Yeah, you can you can say yeah, that any too. any multiple of PMU is also a solution. So, That's so right. That gives the degenerate one. That's right. So then we can think that, that the problem is the demon of the color is non trivial. Yeah, what you said is the good. That's that's very nice way of phrasing it. That's what you said is exactly demonstrating we have this issue. Okay. Because for any solution in mu, I can always add the PMU times alpha. It's also a solution, which is exactly this, this thing. So it's it's not unique. Okay. Yeah. 찾았습니다. 그 그러니까 미니마이즈 하고자 하는 함수가 f가 있고 그리고 컨스트레인트가 g가 있으면 f 플러스 람다 g를 라그랑지 안으로 두는 거잖아요. 예. 근데 이제 그래디언트 f를 람다 그래디언트 g랑 같게 둬야 되기 때문에 그래디언트가 g가 그래디언트가 0이 되면 안 되는 걸 제가 알거든요. 오케이. 네. 그래서 그래디언트가 0인 경우에는 잘안 되는 거로 알고 있습니다. 오케이. 지금 왜 이제 이제 써야 되는 거죠? 아 if G is your constraint, and then if you want to impose G in the Lagrangian by adding Lagrangian multiplier, you don't want the, the uh, uh, constraint function G such that whose gradient is zero. Was that what you're saying? Yes. Good. Okay, I, not that I understood the mathematical reason, but that, that explains why we don't want to add, add a linear term. Right? Because remember, um, a grade of, okay, not necessarily. Yes, thank you. <laughs> So that, that question is still there. Let's let's continue. Um, so now let's rewrite our operator in the presence of uh, in the presence of now gauge fixing term. So you will you should find that now you get this uh, plus minus plus. Okay, and then now we want to uh, find a Green's function, which which is rho. No. rho. So first of all, you see now now this 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 is invertible, right? Because if you obviously the reason why this has zero eigenvalue was precisely this to cancel exactly, and, and then whenever you see so now this is invertible. <clears throat> So long as C is not equal to what infinity in this case. Okay. So now there's no exact translation between this and that when I multiply by P here. Okay, meaning that I am I get back for presented. I can value, sorry, I get back for presented. Okay, so now the goal is to solve this. How do you solve that? Well, now you know how to do it because now this is a tensor. Uh, with the two Lorentz indices. And here we have only two ingredients. How to construct this? One is this, the other is P mu. So obviously we can set the answers, which is A times this, and then B times P mu. And then plug in and then actually solve this equation for A and B, satisfying this condition. Okay? So the final answer you will find is um, minus G mu nu minus C. You in your order piece. This is the solution. If you actually plug in, actually determine a uh, um, 
A and B, you should find this. This is a straightforward exercise you can do. So therefore, uh, our propagator, focal propagator, which is vacuum expectation value of time order product of A mu, A mu y, which is the same as contraction. And the way we set it up, this is Fourier transform I times uh, uh, propagator. Okay, so that was that was the uh, um, set up. So this is a momentum space propagator if you want. So therefore, momentum space propagator that we found is <clears throat> oh sorry, I lied to you. I didn't I did not write most one of the most important thing, one of two square. So there should be another one or two square. So it's that. So okay, once again, if you plug this in. Again, you find A and B, it is this numerator divided by P squared. So the photon propagator has this P squared minus I, G mu nu, plus minus, in this case, minus C, B nu, B nu, or P squared. Okay, and that's classical Green's function, by which I mean you just Solve this Green's function, which now is invertible due to KGB term. You got it. Now, to get a time ordered propagator, not just the Green's function, class of Green's function, you have to do what is known as I epsilon prescription. So you shift P squared in the denominator by plus I epsilon. And this is the thing that I want to now explain to you why that's the right perspective to do. Okay? So if any case fixing makes the D invertible. If it is, it is a well-defined gauge fixing in, in a sense that it, it removes uh, all unnecessary redundancy issues. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. 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 Oh, Professor? Yes. I'm just wondering that the solution, by using the solution, we can find the A. By concepting A as so J U. You mean this A? No, no, J. Yes, no, no. The, oh, the, the, the bottom field, yes. So, you know, the free function. Yes. So, and my question is that, and by the gauge fixing condition, mm -hmm. the, a, the field A have to satisfy the foreign stage condition. Yeah. After U A, U equal to zero. Okay. So, my question is that, I think. Partial mu pi mu nu equal to b zero. Well, let me make sure if I understand you. Uh, part, so you mean the partial mu of this maybe should be equal to zero. That's your plan. Yes. In other words, given a source, okay, let's yes. have to check. Given us, okay, I just erased. Given us, okay. okay. So the question is. Um, uh, okay, the question is, I, I should be able to find this from this equation now. Okay. And then you have to check that different. Okay. So basically, this should translate it into P, um, what? P mu dotted with the uh, epsilon mu nu should be zero. If that be the case? No, no, just not T mu or partial mu. Uh, right. But I'm in the theory space. Ah, okay. Yes. So, yes. And I, I, then I use the fact that P mu, J mu is also zero. Because uh, I'm using the conserved current. Yes. Okay, remember A mu can couple only to the control cost which we check. So therefore when I take the partial derivative, I acting on the first time this year and that and the second time acting on J mu, but that's your percent music. Okay. So your question is basically whether this is a satisfying. Okay, yeah. So for my question is very intuitive sense. There is Q Z Uh-huh. So it cannot be equal to zero. Okay, so I will comment on that. So that's a good question, and that's a valid question. So keep this in mind. 
And then I have a couple of comments to make about this. And this will be one of one of the comments. Good. So why do we don't have i epsilon in the p square? That's also related to this is gauge fixing dependent. Right? Uh, but when the p square is zero, that one is indeterminate. Right. Good. So mathematically, it's true. But again, uh, physics should not depend on this entire piece. OK? So I don't care whether I put iPhone there or not, eventually. Mm -hmm. And this is the what's actually controlling time order, which I will show now. Okay. OK, so let me make a couple of comments. Comment number one. This is about the overall psi. So here, overall psi, we have minus here, an i times something. So to this end, let's recall ourselves. If I look at the propagate of a scalar field in, in the momentum space, we got i plus. This vertical is massive scalar. It is this. And then uh, basically, Wait, the statement is that with this plus sign here, it corresponds to, you know, uh, propagating virtually positive long state. So now if I flip the sign here, I basically screwed up everything, right? Everything becomes unstable. You know, there's instability issue. Now, the comment is why? How do we see that this is the correct sign? So this end, um, to see that, let's just pick a gauge, a particular gauge, gauge fixing, which I will just say gauge. But whenever I say gauge, I actually make gauge fixing condition. So here we're gonna speak c is equal to one. I think it's known as a Feynman or two, probably both. I'm going to do gauge condition. So in this case, because physics should not depend on how I fix the gauge, this entire thing drops out. Then a mu a mu p becomes minus i d mu nu p squared plus i times one. And in particular, so this this look minus i plus i plus i plus i. And we know that we want to get the two well-defined positive norm propagating for the uh, degree beta. And this obviously was not one of those, right? This is a zero component. Remember, if you want, you can pick a, a gauge where a zero component is zero. We talked about this. Then on top of that, you can imagine. Now here, I'm just putting a previous gauge fixing condition to, get, to guide you. So certainly, I don't want to have a plus here and the three minuses, because we knew that we are going to get two propagating polarization mode from this spatial component. So it's, you better have a positive side here, and then you just have a minus side because eventually this will be dropped out. Okay? So this is just telling you why that overall side makes sense. Okay, so moving on to the second comment. <coughs> So uh, there are a whole bunch of gauge uh, gauge fixing, and I already talked about so different uh, different variations of gauge fixing. So what we already talked about, okay? So this is by my gauge. Just to say in short, by my gauge. And often this is useful in computation because then I don't have to bring all this, you know, complicated expression. And uh, second gauge is called this value called the Laurent gauge. Oh, not this Laurent. Laurent gauge. Okay, not the Laurent group. That person's gauge, but different person, the rest gauge. So uh, if you do that, I mean, propagator, so here, propagator, 
uh, how do I write? Well, let me write IP mu, IP mu, well. So here, the propagator is given by e squared plus one minus i, p mu nu, minus p mu, p nu. And uh, so in this case, if you look at, if you recall original form, uh, the, the, you know, this Lagrangian like, had, remember, one over two c, del mu, and mu squared. So if you take, can see it goes to zero limit, basically this will explode, right? What that means is that that forces, so then this limit forces to impose this condition. Okay? So, that's the way of understanding what, I, what, I'm say, what I said here is in terms of path integral. Path integral, you're going to sum over all possible field configurations with this action. In this case, action included this term. So, if you take this limit, it's as if you're going to sum over something weighted by this factor, but then you have, you know, humongous term, which would give you wild phase oscillations. So, so in that limit, if you take uh, arbitrary A field, all those con con configurations basically make a zero contribution because there's a wild phase oscillations. And the only term that makes a meaningful contribution is if you actually impose this condition to basically set that up. Okay, so that's how you see this condition is imposed. Okay, and then there are a couple more. As we talk about different gauges, what happens to look at everything. And this limit is known as unitary gauge. But this is actually not useful for QED for now. Because remember, in this limit, basically gauge attack system drops out and they revert back to non invertible issue, non invertibility of, of the differential operator issue. But okay, it, 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 at, this, at this level of discussion, it's not clear why this is a good gauge, why that's called unitary gauge. Um, but I can comment one thing. Probably I shouldn't. Should I? So eventually, so let me just slide. Eventually, we are going to encounter, are we? So there is these two different gauges for non-ideal gauges. The one thing is called RTC gauge, which is actually the gauge we've been using this one. Another one is called the unitary gauge. Um, there is there is a reason behind these names, so let me say in word, okay? In case that makes sense to you, that's great. In case you remember when you eventually studied non abelian gauge theory and the gauge fixing, that's great. Uh, so this R, I'm not sure if that's actually a historical reason, is for renormalizable gauge. And unitary means unitary. Now, the name came from the fact that in order to show a given theory is a renormalizable, okay, one of the best important scheme or a feature that you want to see is what's known as a power company. And this is totally a side, okay? Don't worry about if you don't understand any, anything what I'm saying. I'm just saying it in case some of you will understand. So in showing renormalizability, which doesn't shouldn't make sense to you because we even talked about, haven't talked about the renormalizability or renormalization. And there's an important feature uh, in order to show that what another thing is known as a power counting is crucial, it turns out in this particular gauge, power counting is manifest. On the other hand, in this gauge, unitarity is all about I don't want to see unwanted results in your freedom. So here, only the physical degree freedom survive. On the other hand, here, power counting becomes obscure. So what it means is that you want to eventually see two different features of the same theory. A, you want to make sure that your quantum field is unitary. And showing unitary, showing unitary is, uh, in order to see unitary clear, then you, you, you want to go to the scheme or basis or a gauge such that you don't want to see any weird ghosts floating around. In this case, manifest the feature. On the other hand, um, Turns out, in this gauge, power counting becomes unclear. And so it's very hard to see now renormalizability 
in that gauge. And then and if you go to the another gauge fixing choice, it turns out that you now you have to live with the cost. Okay, this P mu P mu over P squared that term actually has a cost in it. So now unitarity is not clear, but turns out in that game, power counting becomes clear that you can actually show renormalizability. So you, you want to make sure that theory is both renormalizable, unitary, but uh, it turns out, you know, there is no good single gauge fixing that shows both of them nicely. So you pick one gauge fixing to see one feature, pick another gauge fixing to see another feature. But since physics should be independent of gauge fixing choice, you know that both are there. Okay, so this happens a lot. Yeah. One thing you need to Good, so there are many different goals. General property. So there are lots of goals. Why they are goals? Okay, so you see, <laughs> um, you have a friend, and some of them are very nice. <laughs> some of them are like, you know, I don't want to spend time with them, right? Mm -hmm. So some goals are really good, cool, nice. And some are like, okay, I don't care, and actually I don't want to be bothered. Mm -hmm. And you all call them friend sometimes. Two, <laughs> so the goals, some of them are extremely important to give me a good life. And one example that I just said in the word was a para, 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 para ghost. Mm -hmm. That's essential to restore unitarity. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. yes. But another, there are another ghosts. It's absolute net negative. Okay, mm -hmm. so they are like you know negative norm state. You know probabilities all ill-defined, all of that. And you want to do your best to kick them out. So if you want to be in that mode, you go in this mode and get out of you like kick kick them out all those bad ghosts. Um, but then you're not going to see this feature. So, so sometimes bad friend is also important to uh, manifest. Um, my question is, which uh, there is ghost term? Uh, there are ghost term. Yeah. Uh, there are is net p mu p mu or p square or something like that. I said that uh, in yeah in in yes there is a fictitious poll. Ah, the ghost thing. is for the something term containing a fictitious. Yeah, thank you. Should pulse. That's as if there's a propagating mode, but with negative psi and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And um, those are artifact of description. Of stuff. And physically, you should not have any of those. Mm -hmm. Good. So, so this is a quick comment on, on anyway. It's good to hear about. And there is another gauge fixing called um, light on gauge. Okay, I don't think all of this tells you much, okay? Because you actually have to use this gauge, particularly gauge fixing to computation and say, oh, this is very nice gauging. Um, anyway, so this is the gauge, basically you're saying that this is projected that along the null direction is projected out. Turns out this is useful for some, whenever you deal with what's known as salt or collinear. Again, this may not make sense. Um, and then we, we encounter the colon gauge, right? So it was encoding spatial part. And then we saw that that's not complicated gauge fixing. So we supplemented with the imposing extra condition. We talked about this last lecture. And sometimes this is intuitive, very nice. The problem is that this is not Lorentz invariant. So again, it's similar like this feature. This gauge very clear on the physical degree freedom, but Lorentz invariants become many, uh, become obscured. Okay, and so on and so forth. There's always this, this sort of feature. Um, okay, I'm not sure if I want to list all of that. There are some more, something called the radial gauge, gauge called uh, similar. We just project it out the more along the radial direction, and so on and so forth. And since this is I almost did them to finish up. There's one more thing. Now I need read or write and read dash. It's a specific one. Great. You can pick other activities. Um, okay, so um, I have a question. Yes. So why do we even use light on gauge? So what, in what terms do we use to pick? Is it good from the others? So, so good. So your question can be generalized. Which gauge, so, no. How do we see which gauge is used for, for what? Oh, yeah. 
So that depends on the sort of question or physical physical situation you are in. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, in this in this case, presumably you're looking at the physics with you know that that has this extremely light or soft that has a no light propagation, mm -hmm. and then you want to single out a mode that 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 uh, is best describing those sort of physics. Okay, and so, so which case is the more useful? Again, it depends on which 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 kind of physical situation the process you're looking at, and um, does that say, not that I have done calculation in this case, actually, I have not done any, any calculation in the gauge. Turns out this gauge is useful when you're dealing with a salt radiation sort of physics. Right. Yes. Okay, we, okay, I'm always confused by like, this type of argument. So, okay, so we, when we begin our discussion, we said that Kush behaved as a Lagrange multiplier. Yes. So we vary Lagrange and we believe that Kush is then constrained for gauge condition is proven. Yeah. But in practice, we just fix and uh, choose some number for Cushy. Yeah. And then just uh, carry on calculation. Yes. Then how we can ensure that choice of Cushy is guaranteed by contract? Yeah, good. So uh, two things. So this is related to what I said. Um, if I write down, like write the multiplier, I'm just viewing this as some uh, background field that includes interaction between first and six. Um, at the end of the day, which value I'm taking, it, it still imposes the same condition. And then here, one, one uh, I think, important feature is that, remember, I'm not imposing equations of motion of a, uh, equations of motion of a C at the level when I derive photon propagator. Remember, so either you have to already constrain your, you know, a new field space by imposing gauge fixing, and then derive a propagator, or don't constrain your A space, but just remember that there's that from sitting there. So when I when we derive the photon propagator of a general form, it's not here, right? It's not like I already imposed this condition to get that form. I just added this term, and then I'm just, I'm just gonna behave like I'm gonna allow all possible A configuration, and then I derive the photon propagator. So now um, we're going to have to think about imposing this, uh, uh, we, which we, we, we will be done because eventually, you know, path integrity over C, in case that makes sense to you, will, will automatically impose this condition. Now, uh, your question is like, okay, it is a Lagrange multiplier, and then taking a value, how, how is that like fit together? If, if, if I understood your right question correctly. Right. Um, so, so, I don't know if this is the best answer to that question, uh, but like it is the existence of su such classical configuration that that guarantees gauge fixing, not the particular configuration of that Lagrange multiplier field that that is important. So so long as I have non-trivial Lagrange multiplier configuration, I know that that gauge fixing will be carried out. Right? And so physics should be the same if I use like C gauge fixing with some number A or B and C, it shouldn't matter if we, because so long as they exist, at least from the perspective of photon field, they will do the same job. <clears throat> now it boils down to which configuration can be slightly more useful for certain calculation. Yeah. So if, if that helps, maybe not. Okay, any other questions before I move on? Yes. So four and four, five, and six doesn't even have any choice of C. Yeah, yeah, no, so it's good. So I, I, I've been going through this and then, okay, accidentally, I don't know, or maybe I have something in mind. I draw a line, oh, probably I shouldn't do this first. So here, since I started listing the gauge, gauge fixing condition, I, I thought I'd just uh, write down the type of I mean, this cannot be entirely by definition because I can pick the any other number that I want. But, but some some choices that had some name. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, so if you choose one of the gates between four to six, then you're not choosing any C in here. But then, yeah, by definition, yeah. good. So the, any any choice that is encapsulated by this thing is known as R to C gauge. But uh, then the propagator then always contains you can pick any value. Right? So it's because we didn't specify the values of C, then the propagator is not fixed. Propagator is not fixed. So here, uh, logic could be that you can impose gauge and then you can derive the propagator. 
So oh, not defenders. Okay. So then as a term that that actually might impose a selection XC as so a, as a as a final result. They these are nothing to do with the arc C H. Okay, so um then they use different approach. Yeah, they, they are simply different gauge fixing. Okay. okay. And the these gauge fixing are all coming from this universal term. So that's just a part of the family of the gauge fixing that if you want. Yeah. yeah, it's just choice of C. Yeah. But within the category of RCH. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yes. All right. So now let's move on to our IE second prescription. How to impose this gauge condition in the ground? With mean this? Yes. Okay, so your question is um, here we sort of derived the propagator already uh, uh, from from uh, like starting from the line line that we added that and we derived the grace function. Yes. So here, remember uh, the, the step is that you derive the equation of the motion, and then you're gonna get the Gris function, and then you do like I equal prescription, which I will have to describe it discuss. So in this case, again, you get the, your equations of motion. You impose gauge fixing. For instance, we walked through this exercise for column case last time. All right? So then you, your equations of motion will be modified because you, you're like, you, you, you basically um, delete all the term that has this term in it, for instance. And then you, you get an equations of motion with the gauge fixing imposed. Then you can get a, a Gris function, which is well defined. Which will give you a your propagator. Okay. <clears throat> By the way, in the Laranja multiply on the tool, we like uh, what? Uh, so Laranja multiply sometimes mean hey, um, in the string with uh, some O. Oh. Some ball. Some ball. Yeah. We uh, connect it with the string. Then we give a uh, Lagrange multiplier to constrain the length. Uh -huh. The Lagrange multiplier meaning the tension in the, in the Lagrange description. Okay. Okay. In the this description, what does C mean? I'm not sure if it, it has like that nice physical uh physical uh interpretation. Okay. Again. You know, it, it cannot have a meaning because a three is okay, one is okay, yeah. three is okay, <laughs> and you get the same physics. Yeah. But 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 there are other circumstances where you actually get, you know, if you want in this context. So if I okay, I'm not sure if you're gonna have to be I don't care. <laughs> Here is my photon action written in definition form. So you can uh what I had to cash it. Uh, two B squared. Wow, I over two five. So um one of the things that you know photon field always has to satisfy the mathematical identity is this. This is known as the BIP identity, and this you should give you uh, something like uh, some equation like this. One of the next and then uh, um and then uh, therefore Imposing this, so now you are going to pass on to a new description, new uh, degree of freedom in terms of the H tilde instead of A, where A will be related to, to this field strength by this relation. Okay, we get the differential form. So if you work it out the uh, component, you get the two, two, you know, two terms. So now this is a Lagrangian like, multiplier term whose life is to impose the F equal to zero. Again, um, either you path integrate this, remembering this, or you path integrate over A, like, okay, I don't care because I know somebody will make sure that. Okay? It turns out now if you actually completely path integrate over original field, field variable A, you get what's known as the dual description. This is electromagnetic reality. And since you're, you ask question in this context whether there's any Lagrangian multiplier that has a, a actual meaning, and in this case, this Lagrangian multiplier term will turn into a dual photon or ma magnet photon. Anyway, sometimes it has meaning, but this one absolutely this is not. <clears throat> okay, 
but maybe main bond declarer uh does choosing C reduce physical degree of freedom of measure. Choosing so so long as you have a non-trivial C such that it imposes the correct part of the gauge fixing, then yes, the dual freedom will be reduced. If that was the question. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, I don't I don't think so. I'm not sure. I don't think so. Because naively any C is that is that good question? So the his question was whether you know, choosing C is related to exactly whether you you reduce the degree of degree of freedom by two or not. Yeah. Right. Um, good. So homework problem for you. But two, uh, turns out this the covariant gauge, the only aim is not a complete gauge, just like a cooling gauge was not complete. Okay. So we see that you know if I fix a gauge such that this, or what if I make uh, another you know, build, you know, gauge transformation like so, then I will stay in the Lorentz case or, or covariant case, so long as I make extra gauge transformation that satisfy this is equal to zero, right? This is very similar to the previous discussion. Do so you have to fix polar to kill this redundancy? It turns out that is what's killing the, the remaining one degree. I, I don't think choosing Cushy make make it so. No, that, that's why I said I don't, that's why I said I don't think so. So choosing to see like three versus two should not touch anything about this. But people, but people for choosing Cushy blah blah gauge. Which gauge again? Like Cushy will turn over gauge of one. Ah, okay. So so that that's because you know, um, it's meant by the specific. Uh, good. Okay. Maybe this is related to the question. For any C, which is not equal to, I think, infinity, we'll give you, at this level of discussion, same gauge fixing condition, which is this, this, this condition. And even if you choose a 3, 4, 5, 10, 77, I think you're still getting this condition. Okay. So, so then the question is, why picking a different C value got a new name? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as of today, we're gonna pick pick a seventy seven before yeah. high gauge <laughs> <laughs> and bring an example where this is a useful gauge. Anyway, let's talk about high gauge. Okay, so okay let's talk about high gauge prescription. Remember, uh, once again. Okay, uh, this was classical Green's function. So let's talk about the scalar case first. So if I have a this, and then uh, this, and then I have like this, then if I want to actually have not just one of this two point function, but time order uh, uh, two point function. Then the prescription is doing this. So, so now I want to uh, explain why this is a good uh, prescription. Okay. So to this end, let's recall ourselves. So, so let's just do it slightly carefully because we, we just need to talk about a scalar field. That's enough because all point of this is how we you know uh, incorporate time ordering. So we don't have to talk about in photon, which will come to the other Remember for this. As an operator level was the same, remember, as a contraction. In this case, not plus normal room. Because contraction was defined as the difference between pi and the normal room. And if you expand this out, uh, you will get so hopefully this notation doesn't bother you because what I meant was the vacuum is value. Okay. And this thing has two pieces. So when x type of x is larger than y, turns out uh, this has this. And then there's another time ordering, in this case, this. 
Okay, or you can uh, you can have a back back and expectation by oh, it doesn't matter. It's the same. Remember, the commutator is already seen number. It doesn't matter whether you put it inside of the vacuum tube. Okay, and expression wise, uh, hopefully you remember this is a you know positive frequency mode. So this is proportional to like annihilate operator of the field of the This is like creation operator with plus levels. So that's what all this plus minus sign meant. Okay? So if you compute this, this piece right here it is actually D3P over 2E e to the minus IP X minus 2. You can sure I get this right? Yes. Okay, so therefore, whole expression can be written, the time ordered propagator can be written as. So let me now call from now on to save some shocks. This is tau, my time. So this can be written as integration d3p over 2e. So this thing is either the minus i tau energy, and this thing. This thing will have opposite form. So this will be E3E e, over e, e, um, IP minus Y is split. So the entire thing can be written as theta of tau, which is this term. I have E to the minus I E tau, and then E to the plus I vector X minus Y vector. That's that first piece. And the theta of minus tau, which is the second piece I'm writing now, e to the plus i e tau, and then minus i factor. Uh, so, so far, I have not done anything fancy. I just literally wrote down the full expression. And let's, let's keep in mind that the entire point of uh, time ordering is basically encoded in this part, okay? And you have a positive time, you have to have this, and you have a negative time, you have to have that. So that's the whole point of time order. Okay? So let's keep doing it. So uh, for the second term or first term, it doesn't matter which way which, so I can certainly make a p vector go to minus p vector, change the variable, because this is invariant, you can just pull out the overall factor. That will give you, There's the factor, and then this heat part, you can find one. So now, uh, what we want to understand is why this is related to I epsilon prescription. Okay, so that, that's the whole point of this uh, rest of the calculation. So to this end, we just need to understand uh, Integral representation of that. Okay. So theta function can be represented as as follows: d omega. Okay, d to the positive times i omega t omega, and then epsilon plus, plus minus one and I have to divide it by two pi. Okay, so the claim is that this is a integral representation of theta of t. So let's check why. So let's do the theta of omega equation. Huh? This is complex claim of omega. Okay, now we are integrating from minus infinity to infinity. Good, so so far so good. Now, you have to decide how this contour is closed. Well, that's this fixed by us. So if omega has positive imaginary part, then this exponential provides you exponentially dying function. So that's well-defined. So this is well-defined in the upper half plane in the omega plane. Does that make sense so far? Okay, so. Because of plus i omega t, this has well-defined support from the upper half plane. 
Now, in order to get the non-trivial answer, not only non-trivial answer, you want to get one when tau is a positive, right? This is a contour that you're going to pick when tau is positive. And in order to get the one, you want to have a pole such that two pi r times the residue becomes one. And so here I literally inserted a pole with the i epsilon shift upward. So here's a one pole residue of that thing is one. So two pi r times one is one, so that's one. On the other hand, if you if you consider uh, negative negative tau, then you have to close the other way around. But then theta, you want to get the trivial answer, right? Zero. So you don't want to insert any fold there. Done. So this is answer. So therefore, now the question is, can we just also have an integral representation of this thing? Okay, once you know that, you can plug in, you can re-express. So nothing fancy. So uh, the claim is that, let's see, so this, this much, can I just write as i? This i should be represented as epsilon, so epsilon goes to a zero from the positive side. Um, it should be two pi i minus two e, you'll see. The omega. Make sure I think that's the answer. But... Okay, so 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 this is the integral representation of that, and you should be able to see the basically the same thing. And you, you want to basically make sure that this thing, let me I'll, I'll let you do it. That thing has now uh, um pole. So here, oh, let me just do this. There is a pole naively plus minus c. So when omega is a plus minus c, there's a pole, but because of a plus i epsilon prescription, this is critical. Uh, this pole will be shifted upward like so. This pole will be shifted down like so. Okay? So then, once again, when tau is positive, meaning I'm not looking at this space, then I have to close in the upper half plane. And then I'll have to read off the residue times two pi i. So then, then this is basically forgetting about the since I figured out the location. So since I'm looking at the negative pole side, I'm getting minus two e residue, but that cancels this minus two e. Okay. And then for when tau is negative, then you have to close in the lower half plane. Then basically you're you're now getting the contribution from the Omega is equal to E all. The range is a one over two E, you might say, okay, one over two E. But now this is clockwise. You have to pick an extra minus sign. The face of the end is minus. Anyway, so this therefore is this. Okay, so we're done basically. So therefore, time ordering is incorporated correctly. So if you use this particular i epsilon prescription, which basically tell you exactly which country integral you have to do, which it, which will give automatically consistent answer uh, with the time order. Okay? And now it's a simple exercise that this combined, you plug in here, together with that, you have to be able to show that that propagator is now going to be written as And again, I'm just keeping track of this uh, iPhone prescription. So that, that's why we said that once we derive usual classical Green's function, then I can reinsert or reinstall time ordering if I shift by i one. Okay? Because that will automatically now set up the correct control integral that gives you correct time order. All right, so that's the that's the magic, or it's called the finite item of description. Any question? Okay. 
Okay, so last comment. I forgot the number. <laughs> comment three. This is comment four. So I have this between. I don't know. I just want to have that comment three. This is four. Okay. Now, so this is related to the question they raised earlier. So, was there a question? Okay. No. So now, uh, physics should be independent of traits of agents. And in this particular case here, this is related to independent of C. Because anyway, I'm using this particular case fixing term. So in this particular context, this is the statement. And remember the photon propagator, I'm wondering, and a, a minus i is for plus times one. We understood this. I'll change the new minus so so in order to make sure we always get a consistent independent answer looks like somehow this entire piece should be dropped out or more precisely anything that is proportional to this term from should be just dropped out because by modifying the value of C, I can just change the overall three factor of this term. Okay? So it means that physically, suppose I have something happening here. Blah. Okay, well, I don't know. Something happens. Something interesting happens. There's a photon propagator. There's another something interesting happening. And we want to make sure that. This thing, entire physics is independent of the C, which means that um, something like P mu, P nu, multiplying, whatever this blob or sandwich between this blob should be zero. Right? Otherwise, I cannot guarantee the independence of the C. But this is automatic uh, because recall, this is like photon coupled to something. This picture give you a photon coupled to something. And I told you, photon only couples to conserve current. Right? So, and then such that this is conservative. So, what that means is that this blob really is represented not just random thing. Okay, so there's a photon coming up. There's a blob. That's not anything, but actually just actually control curl. Then here's another control curl. But since it's a control curl, you automatically see that obviously this is automatically drops up. So if you look at this sort of thing where photon composed the control current, control current, entire you know amplitude is actually dependent on this. It's so automatically drops up. Okay? So this is, I mean, one certain circumstances, obviously, there's slightly more uh, uh, subtle question you can ask. Uh, for instance, you can ask, oh, what if um, I'm thinking, no, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we're going to look at a couple of processes I was thinking through. Uh, I think in all of the cases you want to make sure, Things are independent of the C, you will have this, this feature. Okay, so, so this uh, is the last comment before I actually move on to. Um, oh, good. So, therefore, okay, so this is really the last one I want to say because this is the setup that allow me to say that. And this is very useful now uh, and, and, and comforting. Now remember, photon propagator can also be thought of as something like you know uh, the pole, which is massless because I'm talking about massless photon, I times a projection operator. So in this case, let me uh, times a projection operator, and projection operator. 
mu nu takes the form that I'm summing of all the polarizations, epsilon mu, r, or p, epsilon nu, r, or p star. And if this looks unfamiliar to you, recall that, for instance, we talked about this, like summing over spin of the fermion, and then u, u bar, r, R of P. That was projection, right, onto the particle sector. And that was P stress plus M. If you had a VV bar, you had a P stress minus M. Okay, so this is projection. So it's literally, oh, mass of this guy's going, but I'm not only contain physical zero beta, which is about the projection object. Now, uh, this discussion clarifies one thing. Naively, the numerator of this thing has this uh, gigantic object, okay? But as I told you, whenever you have this propagator, whenever you have a process where you have to use propagator in the circumstances, then effectively, that term drops out. The effect of this, this is only to the left over. So uh, this formula, not in an equality, this projection operator. Pre previously, we actually wrote exactly equality, but effectively, effectively, this will be the same as minus GV. Okay. Okay. Questions? Can you explain one more that the point function can be interpreted as projection? Yeah. So uh, if this is a single degree of freedom bar, and then if you specify uh, if you specify the mass, you're done. The propagator should be uniquely one over p square minus m square because there's a single degree of freedom. But if this guy has internal degree of freedom, either polarization or spin. And you start writing something like so, right? Then this thing is like, okay, I, I have a propagation that controls like this. So what, what the denominator controls is the long distance propagation. In other words, if you hit the pole and if you do the free transfer back to the position space, that allow you to have a very long propagation that we talked about last semester. And what this numerator has to kick is that which of those guys actually propagating? with that long distance propagation feature. This is universal because that's all controlled by only kinematics, meaning just the mass. So this thing is, if you like, a matrix that tells you which of the number degree freedom is actually getting propagated. And so that is that is the you know, notion of a projection operator. They're projecting onto either uh, the, the particle sector, in this case, or projection onto the antiparticle sector. And when we derived the Dirac propagator, it had a combination of these two. These two. The first time, particle propagate with the numerator of that. Second time, anti-particle anti propagate with the numerator of that. Okay, so it's, it's both the cases the same. So you can, you can view this as, as that. that is okay, Any, another question. All right, good. So, um, in the remaining of, do you need a break? I'm just gonna need like maybe 20 more minutes. So I, I don't think I can cover, finish the entire rest of the QED processes, but I want to just for, just list, here are all possible QED processes, not all possible, most of the possible QED processes that you would encounter, okay? And, and then introduce names, each of them, and then for just a couple of them, we can write down actually amplitude because now we have a full QED. You know, so most of the uh, Feynman rules, we can write down the expression, basically immediately write down the expression once we draw the diagram. So that's what, what I was planning on doing it. Uh, but if you need like 30 seconds break, I'm going to give you read. <laughs> Any question? Okay, for you, we talked about final uh, like presentation topics, okay, as a, as a, as a final, um, not as a final example, final evaluation 
we will have a presentation. And then I listed the topics, but I will type and then a positive and then the tail the master. Okay. Um, so you can look and then you can tell me. But if this is absolutely enough, you don't want to hear any single more thing about the QED, I can stop you. It's up to you. Okay, so first let me raise and prepare to go to. Okay, so then why don't you just go another like 15, 20 minutes and then that's it. Um, so now we can talk about quantum electro So we're going to talk about a quantum electrodynamics, but only it's classical aspect. <laughs> so we're going to talk about classical, classical uh, electrodynamics using machinery of a quantum field. Okay. So what is the action or the right action? Thank you invite me down. Basically, I have a photon. So we understood things about the photon sector now. And then we talked about what the example if you have a fermion uh, in a minimal consistent way to the photon by promoting a uh, by promoting a regular partial derivative into covariant derivative. So it was Okay, um, so I think this is for charge one, uh, charge one fermion. So I think if you want to talk about char charge minus one, sorry, right? It's, this was for the person for I think electron. Okay, so if you want to have that one with the charge Q, then you can show I guess um, covariant derivative will take this one. So this is the charge. So we spent enough time to talk about the fermion, quantum field, canonical quantization, and so on, propagator. We spent time for massless photon, gauge invariance, conserved color, gauge fixing, all that, right? Propagator, blah, blah. So now we can just switch together and talk about the processes. Now, uh, before that, uh, so who are the possible this charge the matter that we can talk about? You can ask. So who are the candidate for the sun? So obviously you may, may have heard electron. Who hasn't heard of electron? Get out. <laughs> so there's an electron and whose antiparticle, aditron, right? Remember, this guy has a U. B, G, either the minus I feel an X, so it's a particle, and B bar, C dagger, or not, not this. Plus I feel that. Okay, so it's a particle, antiparticle. Here we go. Okay? And then there's a little bit heavier friend of electron that's called the mu one. Mu one plus mu one minus. There's even heavier friend, but this guy is very shy, it will not show up much. This, this will decay to something else very quickly. These are the you know charged. They're, they're called the charged lepton. Charged lepton in the center. So there are three families. It's called the three families. Yes. Oh, <laughs> 우리가 아는 우주에 있는 파티클에 내용되는지는 아직은 모르는 거고 지금 그거를 
그거를 섞고 계신다고 생각하는 맞을까요? 그러니까 at this for this class yes for this class but if you ask so the question was here is a you know some quantum field theory we just constructed it based on mathematical consistency unitary Lorentz invariance blah blah and then here I'm just starting writing down we have seen this guy somehow in nature and then the question is okay. Is this what's describing this guy? So that's your question. The answer, we are, we are you know, playing here the role that okay, I'm the theorist. For the first time in history, I'm trying to theorize this guy in terms of this quantum field theory. And that's what we are doing now as a, as a, as a practice. Uh, in reality, we are damn sure that they are described by this, by many, 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 many digits. This is one of the most precise theory of nature that is constructed by human being ever. I forget my, how many did this, this test, right? up to how many significant, uh, significant figures, like 15 significant figures. Anyway, it's unbelievably correct theory. Okay. Did I, I, yes. When you say, I know, <laughs> do you know? <laughs> so, Two, uh, two different aspects. Here is a, a theory, theoretical framework. And then I'm about to use a theoretical framework called quantum field theory to construct a model of the real world. So there's a framework called quantum field theory. I'm gonna construct a model that I call actually describes our universe. So I'm using QRT to model it. So it's called standard model using the uh, framework of, of quantum field theory. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Do you know it's, okay. I know it's quantum. <laughs> uh, any other question? Good. So this is called a family. Okay? So there are three family in the same model. Okay, four other candidates. There are other guys. They're called something called up. And then there are something called charm. or something called the tna. They are somehow taking a nice names, and then up and the best sort of thing is a down, and the charm and the best sort of thing is a strange, and top and the bottom. Okay, and so far we think that the charge of this guy is a two thirds, so charge of this plus minus one plus one, and charge of this. Column is minus one third. And again, there are three families. So there are this up, down, uh, charm, strange, top, bottom. Okay, and the three families, they're called a, a corpse. Okay, so they're all fermions. These are all fermions. It has do we have other scalars? Because theoretically, theoretically, okay, following the, the, that, that question, theoretically, we know that we can also have something, like some scalar up to two, right? In principle, you can ask in nature whether we have found any scalar that coupled to the photon, right? That's valid the question. No, until now. So we have not found any scalar that coupled to the photon. Experimentally. Experimentally. <clears throat> we have found a scalar. So we so far we discovered the scalar. They coupled not photon, but some other gauge both called the WZ that we have found. Okay. Uh, it's called Higgs. Um what are the you know all what you consider the elementary first? So far. So so I'm about only, to write only in terms of elementary first. So far, so 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 far I'm writing down a field theory uh, assuming. They are elementary fields. Why not you bar, keep bar, keep oh, oh. <laughs> 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 nice, nice guy. <laughs> yeah, there are many. Yeah. So here when I write that E T, there is a left right. I'm not specifying it, right? So you heard too. There's a left right. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And that's a question. As far as fine. <laughs> and then another question. Good. So so these are so far is is uh, is considered to be elementary field, by which I mean if you probe this particle, 
And to arbitrary small f scale, you don't get to see extra structure inside. There are like, like minimal building blocks of the nation. But you can ask yourself, oh, okay, is that the only theory we have constructed so far that they appear to be a fundamental field? No. Uh, there are theories called the composite model where they are made of something else. Okay, so they're made of something else. It's very popular, one of my favorite, my advisors were, so I have to be, yes, I, I like it. <laughs> so, so there are that. And secretly, those theories of a composite, you know, these are all made of some something inside. Turns out, theoretically, they are identical to the statement that, you know, standard model actually leaves in, meaning we are living in a five-dimensional world. There's a beautiful duality called ADS-CFP. So, Randall syndrome composite as well. Anyway, so okay, so then let me just uh, list a couple more. So these are all so far here. Uh, uh, looks like so far these list looks like elementary, sometimes called elementary, by, by which we mean they're not made of something else. They're, they're itself a fundamental or fundamental. Fundamental field. Uh, in nature, we have found something else too. So, like for instance, we have found the proton that has a, a charge plus one, and there's a neutron that has a charge zero. And then we also found something called the pi ion has a charge plus, charge minus, charge zero. We have also found another guy known as k ion, a charge plus, charge minus, and charge zero. We also found what's known as eta, and there are, and then there are also found something called the rho. Which turns out to be vector field, massive vector field. We, we study the proper theory. So we have found a whole bunch of, all, a lot of lists, okay? A lot of lists. And these are all made of something else. It's known as composite particles, it's, as opposed to elementary. So, for instance, um, let's take the example of pi and pi zero. So here, Suppose I look at the pi zero that looks like this point particle. But if you really zoom in, you start, say you have amazing uh, skull to zoom in. It turns out this is made of U, U bar, and then there's a uh, crazy stuff happening. Everything can happen inside. Turns out when I said pi n is going that way, meaning this entire soup of something is actually moving. Okay, so it's made of a lot of stuff called composite particles. So QED can take any of this charged stuff as a, uh, oh, good. So effectively, we can also describe this thing if I want to describe physics of pi plus pi minus. These are Taylor's by the way. Yeah, I didn't say that. They are fermion. So this is a fermion. These are all uh, scalar. This is vector. So principle, we can write down action for QED for scalar too. So, so, so it was useful that way. Okay, so now I'm gonna just list the processes and then we're gonna pick one of them next time and study. Questions? Okay, so here I'm gonna just list the Q, QED processes. The first thing has a name, Miller scattering. This is E minus E minus goes to E minus E minus. <clears throat> so, okay, now you're equipped. What kind of diagram will give you this? Given Lagrangian, I ask process, you give me diagram and computation, right? So that's how things work. But this thing should go like electron coming in, electron coming in, and then photon gets exchanged, electron, electron comes out. Good. So now I'm going my time going that way, which is opposite to the polar that I used to use since I'm starting using other. Okay. 
be one, you can read the other way around. But then you get E plus E plus plus. Anyway, so, so then another diagram is. Ring. And uh, we will start right now, uh, able to the next step. So the second thing uh, is E minus E plus collide to produce, say, E mu minus mu plus. I'm looking at that. For instance, this will happen in one of the what's known as left hand collider. Okay, in the world we had a plan, we had an electron collider before called the lab because lab. Why is it called the lab? Who knows? Wait, it's it's a shame that I forgot the name. Uh, anyway, so for instance, this will happen in a proposed collider called ILC. It's, it's called the International Linear Collider. It was, it was supposed to have a one beam of electron, another beam of positron, and produce a whole bunch of stuff, including this QD process. So let's ask the, the diagram. So here is the one diagram. E minus plus to in, photon in the S channel, and then mu one and E. Or, uh, okay. The diagram should be E, e minus E plus and interacts with N. Okay. Yeah, what do you want? Yeah. You want to have something like this? Yes. But then E cannot turn into the mu. So in, in, in the electromagnetic interaction here, so this will include minus E or plus I E Q sidebar A mu side. So this, that are same field. If I pick the electron field, it's electron field. If I pick the muon field, field is muon field. So as a given vertex, ah, I cannot mix up E with the E or vice versa. So it's an E E interacting with this photon. And then mu mu interacting with photon. But not E mu interacting with photon. Yes. Right. So, so yes, good. So, in the crossing diagram, then you're looking at electron colliding with the pass, pass, sorry, anti mu one generating anti mu with the electron. That's right. Good. Oh, why you cannot pass your code? Coupling between the electron and the mu. Okay, so in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Why do you do not insert that two? Good. So because um, so answer should be in in the part of lecture. Let me let me uh, remind you. The way we constructed was like a mu is a vector field, and you ask, okay, can I construct a among the Fermi bilinears, which is the vector, which is the psi mu, gamma mu, psi. Psi bar, gamma mu, psi. And then we smash them together. That, that was the, our, uh, the coupling. Now, then you can ask, OK, what I mean by constructing Fermi bilinear? Can I pick one of those Fermi fields, another Fermi field, and they contract each other? Uh, so long as the space time symmetry is concerned, that might be possible. But if we start throwing extra properties, like um, quantum numbers, and then actually one of the space-time property, mass. So if one of the psi has different mass as the other, the other psi, then this should be, it should be, this should not be possible to do it. So for instance here, electron has different mass as a muon, and that's why. So if you go back to the exact exercise, when we try to construct the Lorentzian, you know, this, um, I'm assuming this guy has the same representation under the power current as this. But this is like a massive representation. This is a massless representation. Obviously, you cannot do that. Or even if both are massive representation, if they have a different mass, in principle, they have different representation. Of the front, correct? You cannot do that. Okay. Another question? Okay, so third process. 
point. So it's for the model of scattering. You may have seen this. So Rutherford did uh, some nuclei, right? Nuclear, nuclear, nucleus. And then he sent the electron beam and that electron came out with some depression angle data. And then he tried to probe structure, right? That's how he did. So here concretely, uh, we'll be doing E minus colliding at a, a proton nucleus. Then, okay, so what are the diagrams? Well, a direct draw. The so one is electron line, the other is proton. And then we also have a cross channel. Oops. As we go there, the electron goes into that electron, proton. Sorry, yes. Wait, sorry, good. <laughs> Do you feel comfortable? So here, it totally makes sense that I have a cross the channel, right? Because this is identical particle I can, I can switch. And here, obviously, E, P is different, so this doesn't make sense. Good, so we're gonna learn some physics out of this, this thing. Next, it's called the Compton scattering. Alpha scattering is you shoot a photon and electron, then with some frequency, and then you get another photon coming out of that and measure the frequency that of that, okay? Outgoing uh, photon. So what are the diagrams? So there's a photon, there's the electron, electron goes, photon comes out. Okay, again, time goes from, from left to right. And then there is another, this is the S-channel diagram, you want. So if we call, want to call this is P-channel diagram, this is U-channel, according to the terminology we developed, okay? This is S-channel diagram. And then you see if you just also read that way, it also makes sense. So let's see if I can draw that. That also works. Now this is P-channel. Okay, so far these are uh, nice, good uh, QED processes. Not that we have completed anything yet, but we will do it next time for a couple of those things. Let's do this paste out a bit. And then so far, uh, one, two, four, not that it's the explosive list, these are all three level processes, meaning. Given a QED, if you ask these processes, you get a diagram that looks like a tree. Okay, so there are three diagrams that contribute to these processes. Now I'm gonna list uh, two more things, which, uh, which have to the blue level. There is something called vacuum polarization. So the physics is that, suppose you have, you know, I don't know, uh, ionized uh, stuff, like electron is ionized. And then if you try to send in the photon and just see what happened to the photon due to the interaction with this ionized material. Okay, so then you, here you ask the photon propagating, if he didn't interact with it at all, keeps going, and then we know the propagator. But then if he interacts with the ionized material, he can do something along the line. Okay, and you see that this has a loop diagram. We have to learn how to compute, how to conquer issues. And then there's actually an interesting process called a light by light process. Light by light everything. So here the question is, oh, I want to get the process where two photons interact with each other and then two photons comes out. Now, if you ask, oh, do I have a tree, the tree diagram? Okay, so the question here is going to be, do I have a tree diagram? And you can try to draw. Okay, here is the one photon, another photon, and then here, is, here we go, right? You have the diagram that looks like this in order to have a tree diagram. Or you have to have two photon meet, 
third photon comes out, and then the other two photon comes out. You have to have either cubic gauge interaction or quartic gauge interaction. Okay? And then you should convince yourself that, you know, photon Lagrangian, Maxwell theory Lagrangian, with this thing has a new blue, does not have any of these vertices. Okay? Because this is this is a one photon in it, here is another photon in it. This is overall only quadratic in photon. So you cannot have a quadratic cubing. In fact, this there's a deeper reason. Uh, uh, anyway, but but if you now have a non-abelian gauge fluid, by which I mean instead of gauge here, if you one gauge group, if you have SUN and stuff, you get this at three level. Instead, in QED, since you don't have that, you have to have a slightly different process with slightly different uh, diagram. So since it talks to electron, muon, all of that, uh, you can have this diagram. So, so two photon comes in, interpret with uh, uh, this, and then and send out. Okay? So, um, well, you can, you can draw cross diagram too. So in this case, in QED, light by light scattering happens at full level due to this box diagram. Okay, again, you need to learn how to complete this, this diagram. And uh, if this is a side comment, if the fermion that goes into the loop is massive fermion with the MF. And then, if you want to do the experiment where E is much, much smaller than the mass of MF, okay, in principle, one can actually uh, do the techniques of uh, effective field theory, which we have not covered. And Lagrangian will include operator that looks like F mini F mini U squared suppressed by MF. So, so now this has two big coordinate interactions. In particular, it has this uh, with local vertex. So basically, when they are very heavy, it looks like they're small distance effect. And then if you, at the very small, low energy effect, the effect, the effective observable will look like there's a local vertex that looks like this. OK, what I said is not meant to really make sense unless you have studied the effective filter before. But don't worry about it. Okay, all I'm saying is in QED, there's a loop loop used for the process. Okay, so that uh, today, uh, let's, let's end it here. And next time, uh, we're going to write down, say, amplitude for this by, after stating the final rules. And then I think we're going to study Rutherford scattering study in detail to extract the physics. Okay, there's a very interesting physics here. And then after that, we will move on to path integral and remote location. Yeah. 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 Yeah.